Start. Um, we've got a guest lecturer today. Um, probably a lot of you know him already, Tim McAloon. Uh, he's a colleague of mine now at DTU Mac, um, and he's going to talk to you about uh, how to write a business plan. Uh, just for your information. The Innovation and Product Development course uh, was created by Tim several years ago. Um, how long ago, Tim? 14. 14. <laughs> um, so I'll leave you in his safe hands. I've, I've got to um, nip away for part of this lecture today, and I'll be back a bit later on. Um, because we didn't have a group work session on Friday, uh, Tim might finish up a bit early, and we'll run the rest of today like a group work session. Um, so once Tim's finished lecturing, sit around your tables and get on with your projects, and I'll be back a little bit later on. Um, just to give you a quick bit of information before he starts, over the next two weeks, next week we have our midterm presentations. So I'll send you some information about what your requirements are, but basically you have to do a five-minute pitch saying where your business proposition is at the moment. And that'll be your first 10% of your grade for this course uh, related on that. Is there two weeks? Um, no, I think it's next week. Um, okay. <laughs> it's in two weeks. Just thought I'd get you on your toes in the morning. <laughs> but I'll send, you, uh, I'll send you some information on that anyway. Um, coming up also, uh, check, you, check the agenda because we also have a, um, um, a session on business cases. And we have two guest lectures for that week. Uh, one from the CEO of Podio coming to talk to us. Um, and also the uh, Chief Communications Officer from Better Place. Um, so make sure you turn up for that because it'll be a great lecture. Anyway, for now, over to Tim McAloon. Thanks, Tom. And good morning, everybody. I've got a bit of a jazz voice today, so you have to bear with me. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about writing your business plan. And uh, let's see how long it takes. There's, there's, if you look on the internet for business plans, there's all sorts of different kinds. Of, but in, in fact, in general, they're the same type of uh, frameworks. And the, uh, the challenge for me today is to how to make uh, a lecture on writing a business plan interesting and uh, exciting for you. So I hope it does. I've taken quite a lot of contributions from <coughs> McKinsey. <coughs> oh, it's going really bad, isn't it? <coughs> from McKinsey and Venture Cup. And in a couple of days' time, I believe you're getting Venture Cup's uh, business plan as a, as a template for your work. But as I say, a lot of the material is very, very uh, similar from, from one to the other. So these two documents will be made available for you. The first one, the Venture Cup one on the left, as I say, be, it will be available in a couple of days. And then the other one about starting up from McKinsey uh, we'll put on, the, uh, on Campus Net as well for you to look at. You can ask yourselves what uh, ticket of admission I have, somebody, an associate professor from the university has here to talk about business plans uh, at such a lecture, such an academic as me. Well, I've had a couple of businesses myself in the past, and I've guided a lot of people with their business plans, starting up businesses, and seen many different ideas, good, bad, and ugly. So before we start, I'd just like to, to test the waters with you and ask you, how many of you have or have had a business? One, two, three. How many of you plan to have your own business within the next year? <laughs> One. <laughs> OK. Within the next two years? Yeah, the same people don't have to put their hands up again. Next five years? OK. Good. All the rest of you can go home. No. <laughs> the rest of you, doesn't matter, because I imagine you're, you're looking at uh, understanding business planning and business development inside larger organizations. And this lecture is actually also quite relevant for that. When you go home today, I'd like you to have a series of, of uh, key learnings in, uh, in, in mind. The first one is to see what actually are the promising elements of a, a good business idea. So how to discern the difference between just a good idea and a good business idea. Second one, how to make your business idea irresistible. If you can't do that, and this is actually the stumbling block for a lot of uh, uh, new business, potential business entrepreneurs, is that they're actually so deep into their business that they forget how to sell it to themselves and to other people. I'd like you to go away with uh, an idea of what to keep in mind when presenting your business uh, and your business plan to the most important stakeholders. I'd like to um, talk a little bit about how to analyze your market 
And of course, the competition is part of that. How to choose your target market is important. Where to and where not to sell your business. How to determine your market strategy. I want to talk a little bit about what a business system is. So going from a good idea to understanding where we can actually plant that idea in a, a business as such. And actually what to look out for when you're designing not just your product, but the business system. And then what to include in your financial planning. This is a big, big stumbling block for a lot of uh, new business entrepreneurs, is doing the figures right. And I've got a couple of very simple techniques for you to, to, to understand how to do a, a, go from a back of an envelope uh, plan to a, a full uh, financial planning. And then finally, how to consider and represent risks. Another pitfall, we all often think about the great idea, and uh, quite often we don't think about what stumbling blocks are on the way and what holes there are in the road. And we need to think about these straight away, right at the beginning. I have a couple of cases to, to, to show the importance of this. And as I said, the main focus of my lecture will be on new startups and all the business plans you can find out if you uh, search on them on the internet are pretty much for new startups. But I think about 80% of the elements are just as relevant for established businesses, how established businesses uh, start new business planning and business operations in their organization. This is the way I'd uh, propose to, to uh, uh, give you all this information today. And it's not actually a proposal. I'm just going to do it. So first, I'm going to talk about how to identify a business idea. And then into the actual business plan, I'm going to walk step through, step by step through the business plan uh, with you, how to develop the, the business plan, and all the way from the executive summary, describing the product and service concept through to the market strategy, the business model and the system, as I talked about a little bit before, the business case and the risks, and then the implementation plan, including the, the financial plan, and then we'll, we'll do a case at the end around this. We've got a couple of cases along the way as well. So how to identify a business idea. There's many ways of trying to frame what a good idea could be in a business sense, and this is just one of them. So four areas. Clear customer value is absolutely utmost important. What a lot of us actually do when we're uh, uh, preventing or, or, or developing new business ideas, we're often stuck down in the technology or in the uh, one particular area of the business idea. We need to understand, actually, what is the customer going to get out of this? The final user, what is the value they're going to derive? <clears throat> A market of adequate size is important. Understanding how to pinpoint and to, to define the market. What about the degree of innovation? that's necessary for this business idea. If we're going to go in with a new business which is going to be absolutely the same as something which is out there already, then chances are you're not going to get funding for it if you need funding, or, and or when you come out with your business on the, uh, uh, on the market, the uh, uh, response is going to be quite, uh, quite low to it. And that links on to the final one about feasibility and profitability. So how feasible is this idea and how profitable it is? Not all business ideas and not all new ideas have to be mega profitable. And I'll show you a couple of examples about businesses which, which simply are, are, are set on this world to make the world a better place. One of these is this machine here. Has anybody seen this? Yeah, it's the XO computer, which was made for um, children in schools in developing countries. Uh, it was called the $100 laptop. So this is uh, launched now. and. Uh, this really doesn't have the, the, uh, the big aim of being profitable, but feasible it is. It's, of course, going to break even, but it's going to be feasible for small schools or schools in, in uh, small uh, communities in developing countries to be able to buy these for the school children. The clear customer value is that these children should get access to a certain amount of uh, uh, programs or, or to technology in, in general to keep up with the, uh, the rest of the world. The size of the market has been thought about. Uh, what is the market with this type of uh, computer? How many can we actually provide? And how do we actually uh, send and implement this, this business and, and get these, these computers out to, to, to the right places in the world? And how innovative is it? Well, the degree of innovation here is completely stripped down uh, software in the, uh, in the computer. Uh, very, very uh, energy efficient. 
Um, it's got two ears here, that's the, the Wi-Fi. It's also got a, a wind-up handle on the side because it's a, it's a rechargeable one. It's got a solar panel on the back as well because it's going to operate in, in areas where the power isn't something we can't uh, rely on all the time. But the profitability isn't necessarily the biggest focus. So different types of business ideas and, uh, can have different focus areas. This one's a very different type of business plan that came with this. Let's make shoes into socks or socks into shoes and put the toes in them. And you could walk yourself around this, this, this framework again and say, well, what is the customer value and what's the potential market for this? What are the, is the degree of innovation or is it just a, a fad? And what's the profitability here? And this is a product which is, is surviving but with a very, very different profile than the computer I just showed you before. So I'm just going to step, when we're looking at defining the, the, the business idea, first of all into one, three, and then four. I'm going to miss out number two because I'm going to go much deeper into that when we get into the business plan as such. So let's look at customer value. The first and most important thing to, to understand with a, a business idea is that it's actually satisfy customers, which is important, and not the product. And this could be a wake-up call for uh, many of us. I'm an engineer too, and I get really stuck down into details of technology and how great the product's going to be, but actually that's not the aim, that's the means, not the goal. The goal is satisfied users, customers. So the, traditionally, the product developer's view could be our device can perform 200 operations per minute, or our new device has 25% fewer parts, this is not going to sell a business. The innovator's view on the same product could be, our new device will save the customer a quarter of the time and therefore 20% of the costs. Or our new solution can boost productivity up to 25%. Uh, These are the types of things we're looking for, and this is the customer value that we're, uh, we need to describe in the business plan. So the product is merely a means of providing customer value Customer value expresses what's novel and what's better about the idea compared to competing offers. That's also extremely important to, to uh, always compare to what's already on the, on the market there. And again, if we take this machine down here, well, this is a means of delivering technology competences to, to children. And you could discuss the, the, uh, the, all of the different uh, value elements of this, but this is the, was the clear business plan uh, idea that the value here was to, to give technology competences and access to technology to, to, uh, uh, to, to children in third world countries. The $100 laptop, as I called it before, this is the, uh, was the, the aim with this. <clears throat> and these guys don't need any uh, introduction. They found a, a $500 laptop, only five times the price in a, a, a part of the world which was extremely different in its demographics and in, in its buying power but the customer value was, was relatively similar uh, in this idea, which became, as you know, what it is today. Another way of measuring for yourselves, and when you, you come with your business ideas, trying to measure what the degree of innovation could be in your, uh, in your uh, innovation projects, can be to make a, a matrix like this. This is from McKinsey, and they're like two by two matrices. The business ideas can be classified along two dimensions, the products and the services on the y-axis here, or the actual business system here. And it's basically an a old, new, old, new on the axis here. And you can see that there's some products and companies plotted in here. This is a relatively old piece of material, as you can see now, uh, by some of the examples. But in each of the categories, basically, you can develop something new or capitalize on something. It doesn't necessarily have to be new, new all the time. It doesn't have to be a new industry all the time. But let's just look at a couple of examples. Where would you place such a product as this one? And I promise you, it's number two out of three Apple uh, examples, and then they've gone. <coughs> Where would you place this on the matrix? So new product and service, existing business system, new product and service, new business system, existing products or service, new business system. Any suggestions, proposals? No? Okay, I'll start you off on this one. You could put it actually in many places, but I'd, I'd like to focus in particular on this one because the product, of course, is new. 
It's, it, it's a completely different, uh, um, the technology is, is, is much more streamlined, the product is uh, design-wise very, very different. But the important thing is the business system as well is totally new. These were, this is one of the products which legalized MP3 music and made a business, a whole new business system out of uh, MP3 music distribution. And in fact, selling music by the number rather than by the album. Of course, we used to have, when I was a boy, we used to have seven inch singles, but there was a big gap when they, when uh, old vinyl technology uh, went out of, out of uh, fashion uh, um, and through the CD technology, actually selling, selling music by the number actually fell off as a business uh, system. And now we have a complete new market uh, based upon this uh, industry here. Okay, what about this one? This is uh, a local business called Ostilner, which means the, the Four Seasons. And it's basically a system where you're, uh, they're selling ecological fruit and veg to home users, also business users, but mainly home users. Uh, you have a subscription where you can subscribe to different types of fruit and veg and they become delivered to your house and they're ecological. Where would you place this one? I'm not doing this one for you. Yeah? In the bottom right corner, you say, yeah, I'd put it there too. The product isn't that new, huh? I mean, vegetables have been around for quite some years. Um, the way they're bundled together and the whole business system is, is the, the, the real new thing here. And we'll look at, a little bit deeper into this example in a few minutes. So you can make completely new businesses and, and make innovations and write a business plan around completely existing products, but put them in a, in a completely new context. Okay. Final one, almost says itself, doesn't it? As the pedagogical guy I am, I'm putting it up here. This is a 3D television from Philips. Um, they, the market is pretty existing. They, they're trying to sell them in the same way, selling them in the, the, the local uh, hardware shops and electronic shops, but the business should give us a complete new experience at home. And they've been trying with these 3D televisions for a couple of decades now, but in, in essence, the business plan would, would fit into to this area up here as being a, a new product uh, within an existing business system. So you can use this type of matrix to, to just test yourselves on your own business ideas as to where they fit because, in fact, the way in which you shape your business plan will differ depending on where you, uh, you're placed here. The next thing to do when you're this is the first screening, remember, of your idea, is to do a type of a feasibility and profitability analysis on the back of an envelope, as it's called. So it could be a finance and resource assessment. Um, and we have, two, again, two different ways of thinking. In the old system of looking at new products in existing markets, maybe we'll think about uh, this type of model where the company buys material and has overhead costs and production costs and therefore need to offset those and make a profit by selling the products and services to customers and thereby earning their revenues. That's one way of doing it. If you look at the example down here, of the fruit and veg from, from Austin, they actually don't have the, the, the product um, uh, innovation as such. There are some product innovations there because it's about the ecology in the products, but the main focus here being the, the, the innovation of the business system. Then we have complete new ways and necessity to, to, to work out our business potential in a complete new way. McDonald's and 7-Eleven don't any longer sell burgers and, and uh, 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 commodities in their, in their shops at the corporate level. They're franchising their business out. So their business model is actually based upon franchises where you buy the whole pack. You buy the, the logo on the front, you buy the training, uh, you get the uniforms for your, for your uh, staff. You're sent on courses as to how to run a business in the McDonald's way or the 7-Eleven way. And so that's the one business model which is completely different from the traditional way based upon goods in and goods out and covering your, your uh, costs of the investments there. Completely different types of investments. Can you think of any other businesses which are, are similar or very different than, than this traditional way of goods in and goods out? In any ways, other businesses? 
the whole brokering of, of electronic music, in fact, is, is a, a complete new business model. So we don't actually necessarily need to own any of the music ourselves. We're simply a, a broker between the one and the other. Amazon is another business model which is completely different. Amazon themselves don't publish any books, but they have links to a lot of publishers. And in fact, Amazon live off what they call the long tail. So we have, if you have a, uh, they sell more than books as well, by the way, but uh, as you know, Amazon have a, a system where all the, the high store bookshops are looking to sell the books, as many books as possible, in big bulks, and looking at, at the most popular uh, book sales that they can, can, can get to survive. Whereas Amazon also does that, of course, but what they're also looking at is being in touch with all of these guys here, so that the, the person who wants the one single book, which is in, on, on one shelf of one warehouse somewhere, Amazon have established contact to that. So they have a complete new business system, which is taking advantage of not just the, the, the big volume, but also earning a business on, on small volumes, one, one off prints even. So that's, a, a, again, a completely new business uh, system and a different way of putting the business model together. Okay, so that was the framework that you could, could consider to look at. And I think we'll, we'll do an exercise in a minute to try and put ideas into this framework. In fact, it's now. Just discuss for five minutes with your, the guy next to you or in your group, what key questions you should have answers for if you're going to successfully present and promote a new business idea. It could be any idea. You could take the, the project you're working on maybe in, as an example, but just come with a couple of questions, the key questions that need answering. And you, maybe you could interview each other, pretend that one of you is the, uh, the guy with a million, <laughs> a million dollars in his, in his bag and ready to invest and he's going to ask a series of questions. What could those questions be? Five minutes on that. So choose your absolute most important question. I'm going to start with this table here. What, what's the most important question for you guys? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think we'll something about competition, something about the threats from outside. So what are the threats in terms of the competition? So where would that fit in, in the, the matrix here, if we were to, to look at this matrix? Uh, on two or four, so visibility. Uh, yeah, so down, down number four. So look at competition. What is the competition? Okay. How about you over here? Uh, yeah, we have, again, issue with the feasibility because uh, we are not sure how our product will be uh, sold. Okay. How we earn money from it. Okay, so what? So the feasibility in terms of, 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 of what? Of, as to? Profit. To profit, so the profitability of it. So that's the big question you have as to is it going to make money? Okay, yeah. so profitability. Yeah, you guys? Uh, how fast you can triple my money? <laughs> how fast you can? Quadruple. Quadruple uh, in my money, yeah. So where's, where's the return on investment here? Yeah? And how? how What's the importance there? It's uh, how, and how, are you going to do it? how are you going to do it? Yeah. So in which which areas uh, are you going to do it? So again, it's a bit about profitability and, and return on investment. We'll talk about that in a second. You guys over here? We're talking about uh, just how big the market size is for our product. Okay. What is your product? It's, uh, emergency escape device. Emergency escape device and how how big the market is. So how to to calculate. Is there a market for this, and, and what size is it, and what types of, of, of users are there, and so forth? Okay. You guys? Okay, so you, a new product with the same market, so you're interested or worried about asking what's, what is the, the, the difference in customer value, so where's the, the, the new part of our, uh, our idea? Okay, great. Okay, so you'd fo you need to focus very much on, on where the, the uh, so-called unique selling points in your products are, yeah? The guys at the back? Yeah, we are making a, a, a school book and a interactive school book in yeah. user base. And we believe our biggest challenge is how to find a new business model based on the open source, uh, making us be the market leader within a quite a short time. 
Okay, sir. Okay, so looking from, from old traditional books to new uh, uh, e-based interactive uh, school books, yes. based upon open source, yes. and looking at what is the main customer value, or...? or so more than how, how to be priced, or how to be find a Okay, so pricing strategy, so yeah. yeah, okay. So you need to look down in the other uh, model before, in the sort of relatively existing products and technology, but a new business system, how do we create a new business system based upon open source and so forth, and there's, there's lots of... <coughs> yeah, so many, many challenges there. Okay, thank you. You guys at the back here? Um, we talked about uh, how to keep the customers in the future. Like, yeah. if you have a good idea now, then you have to also be able to do that. Okay. So so how to keep, uh, retain the, uh, the, the, the feeling of, uh, of value and to lock the customers into some sort of a business relationship. So, so maybe, again, something about customer value or so to retain that. Okay. The guys at the back, is that the same group or same group? You guys here? Yeah, I think our most, our biggest question is how to have a direct value for the customer. Okay. We're making a uh, break life depending on the deacceleration of the country. But Where's the direct value for, for, for the customer? Okay. So identifying what, why the customer should buy this. Exactly. Do you know who the customer is? Uh, yeah. We, actually, we identify who, who our first sales will be to. Yeah. And that's going to be to dealers. Yeah. So we're not going to sell directly to the customer. Yeah. So you have a, a, an extra challenge there is, as to one, how to, to describe the value to the, to the end user and then also to the, to the customer, which is the first customer buying your. Uh, Over here at the back. Um, we were talking about um, the actual proof that our product uh, does what it does what it should be safest. Yeah. Uh, because there's uh, we're doing a uh, medical device that uh, relieves a fever uh, or from ankles by rocking or by moving. Uh -huh. So we would have to get. Uh, proper proof that it actually works because uh, depending on, on who we talk to, they don't see that our method works. Okay, so you need to go basically to a first proof of concept and, and you need a, a, a pre-phase in your business model in order to, to, uh, to first prove the concept and when that was proven um, to, to, to go into a, to a, a full-blown business model? Or? Uh, well, actually, um, the the product is based on uh, one of the members of the group. Uh, she's not here. Um, her mother uh, has a medical condition which uh, makes her ankles uh, swollen. <coughs> and, uh, um, and uh, one of her uh, treatment is to have a help in the house that uh, comes and moves her ankles manually. Okay. So that is where the ideas uh, ignited from. Okay. And, and, but, like I said, uh, depending on who you talk to, they don't agree that this actually works. Okay, so you have an idea, a clear idea of what the customer value should be, uh, because it's replacing a, a physical physiotherapist with something more uh, automatic and flexible in that respect, but you, you need now to know what the technology is and how to, to deliver that customer value. Okay, thank you. Any thanks? Yeah, we have a kind of new product for uh, an already existing market. So we need to uh, ensure our customer of the impact of our product. Uh, okay. we will try to s our problem will be to ensure that uh, our product will have an impact on the market. To, uh, and an impact in which respect? Well, we have our, our product is an ins installation device for road cat size. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is our new LED cat size that's on one to install. So we need to show that there is uh, enough to be saved by using our product to actually okay. increase their sale of cat size. Okay. So the impact of our product is quite important. <coughs>
set of goals. Right. So the, the, the degree of innovation and that, that better uh, uh, improvement there. Okay. So the impact of your innovation, basically. Okay. So last but not least, or maybe. Uh, the issue where, we have an issue at markets, but there was also the aim as a fabricator or the actual end customer user. So mm -hmm. we're, we're designing kind of a, uh, a system for bicycles. Yeah. Solar power and things like that. But we're not sure whether we fabricate kind of a long one. Okay, so you, you need to understand the markets and, 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 and where to, to, to slice in there and, and based upon that, your business strategy. So defining which market to, to go after. Okay. Was that the same group here? No, it was the group. Okay. And we're so. doing uh, wind measuring device for our smartphones. Okay. And, uh, we've been talking about uh, what added value is, what degree of innovation we have in, in our product. Yeah. What is the new thing? How can we persuade the customer to, to what he's getting out of this? Okay. Right. Okay. So added value from 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 the new technology again. So uh, differentiation, you could say, and, and and new things. Okay. Great. Thank you. So as you can see, it's interesting that, that quite often when we we do this exercise, most of the of the uh, responses come into the these three spheres here and not so much on the degree of innovation. It's possibly because you're so much deep down into this and, and taking this for granted. But there's a set of questions in the material which you'll get delivered to yourselves to ask yourselves the questions again and systematically go through and remind yourselves as to what the, uh, uh, the key points in all four of these uh, spheres actually are to, to, to look at. Okay. So that was a little bit about developing the business idea. I've got a couple of, of slides and then we'll take a break. Um, first about developing the business plan itself. There's five core qualities as I see it in, in a good business plan. The first one, of course, is its clarity. This may be obvious to state, but it's, you would not believe the amount of business plans I've seen which are completely impossible to understand because they're so deep down into a particular domain that the, uh, uh, the, the person writing the, the, the business plan has forgotten who the reader is. So it's very concise and it answers all questions. Appendices are great in business plans. Keep the main part of the business plan extremely short and concise. And anything that, that is of, uh, going into any depths or needs more of a, a technical uh, description, put it into an appendix. The business plan convinces with its objectivity. So on the one side, don't oversell your idea. You need to take two steps back and have understood everybody's view on your possible business plan. Ask all the nasty questions before somebody else does. Because if you don't ask them and, and address them at this stage in your business plan, you'll get tripped up later, that's for sure. I've written here, marketing jargon alone will irritate more than appeal. So the way in which you de describe your business idea, don't oversell your idea very objective and maybe write it from a third person point of view. But at the same point and at the same time, don't be too critical of your own technology. So if there's some technology which hasn't been proven, as is, is in the case over here with the, uh, the technology for, for, uh, for swollen ankles, um, don't be too critical because you haven't proved the concept yet, but keep it as an objective level of what needs to be done and put that in as, as, a, as a natural part of the business development process. A good business plan can uh, be understood by the technical layman. I was a little bit on that uh, at the beginning. Practice on your granny. So if your parents or your grandma can't understand the business plan, then the bank manager can't either. And believe me, I've been to the bank manager with a business plan where it was far too technical and he basically threw me out and said, come back next, next week and rewrite this thing. Use sketches, photos, mock-ups to describe the, uh, the idea. That's also fully allowed. and and very uh, uh, interesting for, for, for the, uh, the main investors and potential uh, partners in your business to, to, to get a good idea of what you're, you're planning to, to, to launch as a business. Number four, a good business plan is written in one consistent style. So very often, and more and more often than not, business plans are written by more than one single person, a group. You're going to write the business plan as your groups as well as part of your, your project. Have one person who is the, the, the person who writes the whole 
uh, or not writes the whole thing, but uh, checks the whole thing uh, through in terms of its consistency of writing style. Again, very, very low practical advice, but extremely important. You can see straight away when uh, the ideas have been divided up into five parts and thrown together. And finally, pay attention to these because a, a business plan is actually your business card, so it's extremely important to, to, to make sure that the detail is, is correct there. There's nothing worse than being tripped up um, by some detail you've forgotten to put in there. Executive summary. The idea with an executive summary in the business plan is to pique the interest of the decision makers and to get people on board your business. They should give a brief overview of the important aspects in the business. And it should highlight the product and service, the customer value, as we just talked about a little bit about, the relevant markets, we'll look at that after the break, the management expertise that exists and the management expertise that is required, financial requirements and return on investment. So that's quite a lot of things that you need to get into a one or two page uh, part of the document, but all extremely important and you need to, to cover them all in the executive summary. You should have a clear objective and concise description of the business idea. And remember in this case to describe very clearly who your, clear, uh, your, your key audience is for, for, your, for your business. And remember that the business, the executive summary of the business plan should be a standalone document. It should be the thing that you should uh, uh, be able to divide out and give out to, the, uh, to, to, to many different potential investors. And it's not just the introduction or the abstract of the, uh, of the business plan. It's something which is summarizing everything up in itself. It's something called the, the elevator pitch. You've probably all heard of that, yeah? So the two minutes you get to, to uh, convince the boss or the investor, practice your elevator pitch. So if somebody comes and asks you what your business plan is, you should be able to, within two minutes, tell them exactly what it is and what's needed and what the potentials are and who's going to be involved. Within two minutes, in clear, clear language. And basically, the executive summary is the, is the written version of your elevator pitch, which is, is these ideas here. If you can't describe it in under two minutes, or in two minutes, uh, roughly, then you're not going to get very far with a lot of people. Okay, that's the last one before we take a break. The product and service uh, concept. Of course, the product and service is what you've been looking at and working on hardily for, for, for many months or years, uh, possibly. And this is what you're deeply uh, uh, experts in when you come with your business plan. But you need to describe it crisply and clearly. We just talked a little bit about the customer value, so be careful to describe what the customer value is in terms of why it's better than other products or solutions or services which exist already on the market. What, is it, what edge do you have with your, your uh, uh, idea here? What is the function that it's going to provide to, uh, uh, to the customer and what value is it going to provide? And the function is the importance, so not the technology, but what it's going to do for us. What are we going to do? We're going to uh, ease people's uh, uh, aching ankles in a new way. We're going to measure wind uh, in a completely new way. So it's not the technology itself, it's the, the function that it's going to give to you. And then define the business area in detail. Uh, what area are you moving into? So you could use that two by two matrix if it's a new product in an existing market. Show that you understand and you've, you've, you've plotted yourselves in relation to other businesses and other products which are already out there. And if your idea, your business idea, is actually consists of many different products or components of products or, or, or subscriptions, then be careful to describe those in relation to each other and describe their uniqueness and how they fit together so that you're not uh, cannibalizing your, your own ideas. And then finally, develop, uh, the development stages of your products or service. Tell us where you're at. So if it's not, the concept's not proven yet, put it in there. If it's a little bit longer, you could, you could show us that. In, include, as I said before, photos or sketches. Maybe if you've got a prototype, you could uh, send that. Maybe send a CD with a video of it. Um, any patents or pending patents that you're working on, send those. I should say that if your, your patents, if your business idea is not protected in any way at all, 
a lot of investors simply won't touch you because it's too risky for them uh, to, to invest in you. And if the idea doesn't, doesn't uh, come to, to fruition, if you've not protected your own idea and somebody else comes with, with uh, the idea, just a better business model, then you get some, some very tricky situations. So a lot of investors say, go home and uh, get your, your protection of your idea in place before you come uh, to us for, for investment capital. Okay, if we take the customer value for this one, for example, as we said before, it's the, it's the same product, but the customer value, and when they thought about this, this business model, very different than, uh, than current offerings. We're going to take the fruit and veg directly to the door. The, um, the value being transferred to the customer is uh, good quality, ecological uh, guarantee, uh, fun uh, recipes, and trying something new. So each week they'll put a new veg in there or a new piece of fruit which you've maybe never tried before. So four key value areas there which were, were defined even though the product has been out there for years. So it's the bundling of this product in a new system, which was the, uh, the, the exciting part here. And then defining the business area in detail, they have different uh, subscriptions to this pack, which I'll show you after the break. And that's a, a definition of, of the, the different types of users and the way in which they could be interested in, in this uh, product here. Okay, let's take a break here for 10 minutes. We'll come back here at 25 past nine. And then we'll go into detail with the marketing strategy, which is the area where <laughs> Many, many of us fall down in not understanding the market strategy. So we're going to give, look at a couple of tools there to help you with that. Ten minutes. <laughs>